Uh, the mayor is in. It's nice to see you, sir. How's everything going? All is well. It's good you to know, have you. you know, the guy, he's he needs to be careful. I I don't oh. even know if I would I would try to get that car back. Yeah, Gosh, I, would too. I, take I, it, I don't know I what to do back. on that one. I take it back minus, <laughs> minus <laughs> drugs in there. But uh, that's 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 a little scary because eight hundred fifty thousand is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, how's the state of the city? Oh my goodness, Paul. Um, we're doing a great job in Clarksdale. Lots going on um, with COVID nineteen. Um, you know, this morning I'm rocking the city's mask. Um, we mailed out to every single citizen in Clarksdale. Yeah. Um, we put we gave every single citizen four masks, and um, and we mailed that out to every household, and everyone was elated. They were happy. Is that the same mask that you have there? Yeah, we rocked it. I we like call it, We call it the bandit mask. You That's know? pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. And, you know, it just, you know, here's what we're trying to do. Everyone says that, you know, hey, well, why are you mailing out masks to all citizens? Mm -hmm. But this is the overall goal is to raise the awareness, to know that COVID-19 is still present, and we have to make sure that we do our part to practice social distancing, wash your hands. And guess what? When you come out, when you go to the grocery store, yeah. put your mask on. I'm going to be honest with you, and, and I've never shot away from being honest. Yeah. But when we, I go we know out, that. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I pay for that. But when I go out to, uh, and I've been to the the big box stores, the um, uh, uh, hardware store, Lowe's and Home Depot, and uh, I haven't, I, I've been to Walmart just dashing, dashing in and out a couple of times, but haven't been to the grocery stores in a long time. Okay. But I'll be I'm sorry, honest. You, you don't go grocery shopping? No, and I, I don't do that. I'm I'm, I'm terrible in grocery shopping. Really? Plus, the, the better half has learned now to get them to, and we go pick them up. And, understand? And that's been a great understand. answer because we vulnerable. Okay. You know, I'm, okay. I'm at the vulnerable age there, so oh, so, so we're getting up there now. Oh no, we're you, vulnerable. We we've attained. Uh, we're past silver alert. We're in the vulnerable <laughs> stage. But what I've noticed is that there is probably more African Americans who are wearing the mask than white people. I mean, that's just my opinion. But I mean, I see actually as as an equal number in that age group, mm -hmm. specifically okay. the okay. older people. Okay. I see more African Americans who are adhering to this policy where I go than than and of course that 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 might be changing. Then that might no, be. No, it's it's it's. That's you see, it, well, you and I go in the same places. Yeah, that's true. Simpson County, uh, Ocean Springs, Holly Springs. It may not be the same. I, I don't, I don't know. Paul, I'm gonna say this. You know, I'm all over between my my drive radius is between Jackson and back up to the Delta. Yep. And so I'm going in local WalMarts and um, seeing what's happening in Madison County and all the way back into my county. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say that it's almost about equal, especially yeah. in the Delta. People are really taking it seriously now that there's a second wave that is happening, and people are aware that there has been an uptick. And people say, how do you measure that? Because yeah. so many people are getting tested. This is your measure. Are there more deaths? And there are more deaths in the state. Well, the other thing, too, is the hospitalization. Absolutely. And I, and I, and I know the governor tracks that, too, and that's the number one way he tracks this, but... I haven't even looked this morning, but for some reason, it's become less important to a lot of people to check it because when we, when we first woke up two or three weeks ago, that's the first thing we were doing: check how many people. Right. How every, many more every cases. day, every day, I post about COVID nineteen, yeah. and I make sure that the people are informed, and I track the um, the, the easy one for the public to kind of see. And as we put that information out, it's the rate of deaths. And the rate of deaths is a, it's a scary number every single day in Mississippi. But the problem over, with that, over, though, over 12 people are dying daily. Now, well, that's not true. That, you will go no. to the Mississippi Department of Health. I understand that. And, I mean, you can look at those numbers but, for yourself. Did you understand this? Now, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure, being the mayor, that you knew this. Some of these people I don't know. I don't know everything. Now. Well, hang on. Some of these people <laughs> could have died two or three weeks ago. I got it. Okay. Some of the ones, as far as the death certificate, and it takes a while. We've had some dying last month, but the the paperwork's just getting so in. So that would imply that that's underreporting. It's not. It's not. No, it's not underreporting. It's yeah. just not a statistic that gauges exactly how much fuel your car is using at that time. Well, I would say this. Every single day they put out a report. Well, the 12, and, and if you, you can't and go if you, And that. if you look at that, if you do the average from 45 days ago to today, mm -hmm. it's on the rise. So no matter how you get around your statistical, mm -hmm. you know, you can go back to death certificates yep. that's being posted. If you do the average, the average is up. Your average would 
be pertinent and carry more weight if you are also averaging that over, a, I think, a, a week, a two-week period? No, I'm Not averaging, I'm, I'm averaging over daily. 30 days. Okay, then, then, but then again, what's... That that has not a lot of meaning. Well, guess what? Let me let me, you, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Well, well, wait. Yesterday. Let me let me tell 12, you. Twelve deaths. Let me yesterday. tell you what that has a lot of meaning meaning to mm-hmm. the people that have lost a loved one in Mississippi. Oh, come on! That's oh, it, that's, that, that's that means a lot. I understand. Well, well here it is. In I'm my not saying in, that in my county doesn't mean anything. In, in my county, when people have died from COVID nineteen, it yeah. sends shock waves throughout our community, and it's rising. And I'm asking every single Mississippian to practice social distancing. Right. Wear a mask when they come out, and guess what? Do your very best to wash your hands often and use hand Absolutely. sanitizer. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, that's the bottom line. So Stay we out of the sneeze zone. Yeah. Six feet when you can, when you get a lot around. If you, I, I, I won't wear the mask like in, in something right now. But right, right. if you're in a, in a place where you've got a lot of people around you and you don't know about who they are, if you're family, I understand it. But Absolutely. if you don't know who these people are, then put, put the mask on. I keep so. it as simple as this. If I'm out in the public, yep. put your mask on. Um, you know? Here's That's this, simple. this is a quirk, and I want to get back to some other things. But okay. this is a little bit of a quirk. And I think you as the mayor, uh, Chuck Aspey Clarksdale, would agree. There were so many things we didn't know. We were learning all of this stuff. As you as the mayor and, and, and the health officials, everybody's learning about the surfaces, about the mask, about the hydroxychloroquine, right. about all of these things we're trying to learn in every single day. And every once in a while we get things that are quirks and we don't understand and we, and we question exactly. We found out that it doesn't stay on the surfaces as long as we thought. We found out about hot weather, the, the effects of it in hot weather, mm-hmm. uh, and all of these different things. No new virus cases came up and have been reported as of this moment from the Lake of the Ozark event. How can that be? Did you see the pictures from I the saw Lake that. of the Ozark? I saw that. You had a massive, a people. massive amount of people. Somebody get Fauci Burke's model machine and shake the hell out of it because this just doesn't make sense. There have been no new cases of the virus among the hundreds and hundreds who flouted social distancing guidelines and attended pool parties at Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks on the Memorial Day weekend. Still not too late. Right, but I would say that they're blessed. They're blessed. They're blessed. You think the water was holy water? I don't know that. I know God works in mysterious ways. (laughs) Back with with the mayor. The mayor of Clarksdale is here from accounts and loans to services and advice. No matter where your business stands in these uncertain times, and that they are, Trustmark is here to help you. Trustmark.com forward slash business for more information. Let me specify this because one of our many uh, uh, listeners out there brought this to my attention, and I, I just didn't read the rest of the story, but I knew this. Later, a Missouri man who spent time at one of the pool bars over the holiday weekend was found to be positive for the novel virus, potentially exposing hundreds of others. So when that, that was a part of the story. Uh, those who were there when they found out right. right after they had this thing on Memorial Day that one guy was tested positive, they they asked all of them, which would have been literally hundreds and hundreds, to self-quarantine. And, and how many people do you think did that? Probably zip, right. not a. But again, since that day, even though there was somebody there who was positive, not one single additional case. It's really heard. interesting. It is That's interesting. interesting. you got to wonder why. Hey, maybe chlorine. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Chlorine. But um, I'm going to side on the for caution, and I'm going to right. be as cautious as possible, and I'm going to adhere to the CDC, Mississippi Department of Health, and um, we're going to keep practicing social distancing uh, all the way. We need more good news than ever before, and uh, we got some yesterday about um, an expansion up in the North Mississippi area. We got some bad news yesterday. The Lazy Boy uh, factory was going to be closing down. What do you look like in Clarksdale? Yeah, we're we're really fortunate in what's happening in our city. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2019, we made up um, basically over 25 percent of jobs created in the entire Delta. Clarksdale did. 
twenty five percent of all jobs, and Con- that even congratulations. yeah that's that's mm-hmm. a that is wonderful. Um, my hats off to people like John Levenstein. We, we brought him in as the new chamber director, and he's done a magnificent job. But in during the times of COVID nineteen, um, we even were able to attract. Um, a Silicon Valley company, basically People Shores, mm-hmm. and they've just really ramped up again doing COVID-19. They just hired 70 more people. So, 70. So your t- total now is what? Of new jobs created? No, of that company. Um, right now, I think we're at slightly over 100, but they're going up to 300. <clears throat> and where are they there? You know where the old chamber building is as you come in on 49? Yeah. That's right there by the railroad track. And, um, look, the vision of John Levinston was very important on this. People were criticizing him. How could you turn the chamber building and give it to people shores? And you know what he said? That's for job creation. And he took a smaller building and gave them that massive building so they can house over 300 um, new employees. So I'm not, you know, look, I'm not trying to say that it's a brag moment in COVID-19, um, even a uh, restaurant, um, Wingstop is getting ready to open in the city of Clarksdale. Um, so people are really forging through, and I'm thankful for people like the Roberts family, um, who has like over 30 wing stops all across the nation, and they say they're getting ready to move forward and open their doors in Clarksdale. So, you know, all is not bad, Paul, but there's a lot going on in our nation, and, um, you know, we have to be really mindful doing COVID-19. Mm-hmm. And and this social injustice period, we have to be really careful with each other. I had to send out a memo um, in the city yesterday to tell all of our employees to be careful how we deal with each other. People are psychologically going through a lot um, after George Floyd's death, and couple that with COVID nineteen. People are, their tensions are high, and we're trying to make sure that we calm everyone down, but at the same time, not to disrespect the legacy of George Floyd. We had a great uh, interview yesterday with uh, uh, Nettie Winters of uh, Mission Mississippi and Reverend uh, Rhodes. And it's always good to do that and talk race relations and everything else. And, and again, it's it's amazing to me, and you and I have known each other for a long time. Absolutely. It's amazing to me that we do speak, and we not only we do we speak, we receive data inside us emotionally and, and at different levels, almost in different languages. And yeah. you just, the more you know someone, and I've often, I, I know this, uh, whether it's white or black or white or, or it, it, different ethnicities, the more you know someone, you know their name, their family, and everything else, the ethnicities disappear. Got it. It really does. It, you're human to human, person to person. And then I think you still have at that particular time the point where you may not like that person and you don't like mm-hmm. them for the contents of their character. You just don't like them. Uh, and you have the right not to like that person or like them. And, and you should not be called, uh, called a racist if it's a black guy who doesn't like a white guy. I mean, so we we, we, just, it, we have it, to get on that uh, it, that degree of communication. Look, I love my state, okay, mm-hmm. and I know that there's a lot of obstacles in our way, but. Again, my mission is to always educate and to learn from one another, and we can grow. It's just like the statements of Drew Brees. He's completely off-center on exactly saying that he, he's clueless to what the kneeling is really all about. The kneeling has absolutely nothing to do with disrespecting the flag or anything like that. It's in honor of what has happened to all of these fallen people and social inequalities. But he didn't understand that. And that's what's so frustrating for me, for people. And and I believe Drew Brees is of good character. I I believe that he's a good person. But he totally missed the mark. And and that's why friends like you and I should continue to have a dialogue about race relations and educate people. And it's like even doing COVID-19. There were people asking me, why would, you know, people were saying to elected officials, why would you do a curfew? Well, guess what? In Clarksdale, we have more blues clubs. We have more clubs that are open after hours. So imagine those confined spaces. And they were saying, oh, SB, I get it. But if we can continue to communicate, we will make Mississippi a better place. Dialogue goes both ways? A- absolutely. All right, then give me a second here. All right. From the beginning of this country, for the men and, men, men and women, black and white, and all other ethnicities who, uh, ethnicities who have died to keep this country free, 
We've always understood this. When the flag flies, it flies for a reason. When it's half mass, it's half mass for a reason. When you when you put your hand on your heart, you put your hand on the heart for a reason. When you salute and you're in uniform, you do that for a reason. Nobody, nobody has ever come up prior. Hang on before okay. you speak. All right, all right, all right. Hang on before before you give me my my chance right. here on on open dialogue. Be be. Before, um, uh, um, what's the what's the the player's name? Which um, one? Kaepernick. Uh, Ka- Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. Colin Kaepernick. Okay. Before Kaepernick decided to uh, to kneel, no one in the history of this country uh, decided that that was going to be a show of respect. It was a show of disrespect. It is written into our history. Uh-huh. It is written into everything we believe. And for him to say, I'm going to change this, it's almost like slapping your mother. Okay, now, is a sign Paul, of well, let's, and, and, and let's, go, let's go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole, just, just a little bit deeper. Imagine I have a lot of white friends and black friends, and we have these type of discussions. Mm-hmm. And I go to speak to um, children all across the state. Now, imagine this, Paul, if someone told you we were going to run a race, and let's just say, well, you were around my age. (laughs) Let's just say we were around each other's age. And I tell you that I'm going to give Paul Gallo a unfair advantage. I'm going to say, Paul, you're going to start your race 50 feet ahead of Espy. But Espy, I got a good one for you. I want you to start your race 50 feet from the starting line. And the gun sounds... And it's only 50 feet to the finish line for you, but it's almost 200 feet for me now since I've had such an unfair disadvantage. Who will win that race? So a lot of people are having a discussion in the state that generations of the Gallo family had opportunities that other African Americans did not have. And that gave you a unfair competitive advantage. And we're just two generations back, Paul, from when my ancestors were told that once a young lady got pregnant, she couldn't get married. They separated the families on a plantation here in Mississippi. Well, and guess what? And if if someone was talking about reading, God forbid if you picked up a book to read. So, Paul, this right. is what I'm trying to say. But wait, you, wait, you, wait, Paul. But this these you are went serious. Way far from well, well, no, I'm digging from down. respect for the flag to the Paul, discrimination. He, here's the thing. From, from slavery. Imagine this: there was a man in Yazoo City, and God yeah. rest his soul, T.J. Huddleston. There was a young lady who was pregnant and could not go into a hospital. And this is my great grandfather. Mm-hmm. She was denied admission into a white hospital, and she died in a cotton field because she was trying to have a baby. And that man asked for a dollar for a brick, and he'll build a hospital. And tens of thousands of African Americans were having babies. But imagine those unfair advantages. All of this happened in the early 1900s. But, Paul, I'm trying to say that we are better than this. We can show all Mississippians that we can unite and come together. Can you point to anybody that you know, a white person in your city right now, that would uh, would, uh, adhere to that? And if they had the opportunity to replicate that moment, would do it today? Paul, there's, and I hate to say this to you. You, you think I have there's some, a lot of white, white I have people a lot. In, in Clarksdale that uh, voted on you or didn't vote for you would do the same thing today against a black brother or sister? Paul, I hate to report to you. You, you really there, think There that? are some, and I know of some, and, I, and I, hate, I hate it, Paul, but guess mm-hmm. what? It's hold our on. job. Hold it's on. our job. Woman, I just got this information. Unemployment has dipped 13 to 0.3. Unemployment dip, the numbers are in. Unemployment dips to 13.3%. As the U.S. added 2.5 million jobs in mm-hmm. May... As impact from the virus eases, unemployment dips to 13.3 as the U.S. added 2.5 million jobs in May as the impact from the virus eases. And now we got to get over the the damage from the riots uh, itself. And um, how do you bridge that gap between standing up with the citizens and standing up for the police department? Because in a lot of these areas where this is happening... Uh, there are a sizable number of African-American men and women on the police force. And in some cases, they were hired by a black police chief, who, and the police chief was hired by a black mayor. Yeah, yeah. So how, Paul, in, in most of these places, this is happening are in Democrat uh, enclaves that have been that way for decades. 
Listen, what, what I'm very proud of is what our chief of police is doing, Sandra Williams. Um, you know, I brought her in yeah. um, from Vicksburg. Nice lady. Very wonderful individual. She's doing a magnificent job putting together a lot of policies that are for change. Um, but, Paul, I want to share this with you. You know, the, the question that you asked me were about the different changes in people and what's happening. Listen. There are a magnificent melting pot of ideas from the black community and the white community. In Clarksdale, you still have, and just like any other place in Mississippi, you can do it in Rankin County, you can be on the Gulf Coast or anywhere and find these same type of people. But what we have to do, and I think it's important for the Gallows of the world, the Pete Johnsons of the world, um, the Philip Gunns as speaker, to begin to continue to stand up and weed out racism as we know it. When you know that there are certain people in your community, and I'm just going to use my community for an example, when you know that in this time of a sensitive time, and you have people that get on Facebook and they work in a hospital setting and call African Americans dogs, literally out of her own writing, call someone a dog, that person should no longer be in a hospital setting where there's 80% of African Americans that come to that hospital. You do, just do you should, know that to be a case? I, absolutely. And that person's still there? And Well, as far as what I understood, as of yesterday, that person has been terminated from okay, that well position. Then, then, then well, you ought to be but, happy but about this that. But this is what I'm saying. Then you even have a segment of elected officials mm -hmm. um, that actually have a business in our community that receives money from African Americans mm -hmm. but calls African Americans derogatory names and calls the N-word and, you know, curses them out. And see, this is what I'm trying to share with you, that those type of people should not have a seat at the table. I, I, they, I don't disagree they with not. you, but hang on for a second. And again, Chuck Espy is my guest mayor of Clarksdale. Um, you should, the conversation you should be having with me now is, man, we've come a long way with social media. These people don't have a chance. If you are exhibiting your racism out there now and you're doing it on a social media platform, you are, chances, statistically, your livelihood okay. is gone. But, you are going to be canned. We're talking about the relationship with people that we have. And I'm trying to tell you that if you have other elected officials covering for a white elected officials that would like to run around and call black people out of their name i'm asking well, i'm asking you're getting in the weeds wait wait now. no wait i'm asking white elected officials yeah. and black elected officials to stand up against people like that so we will not have situations where officers are barreling their knees into a neck of an african american all of these are intertwined issues because if you allow that to happen for an elected officials to call people the N-word, mm -hmm. and then another white elected official says, okay, that's okay, you know what's going to happen? Then you're going to have another police officer that does something, and then everyone says, oh, that's okay to allow that to happen. And it's not okay, okay. Paul. It's so I'm asking all Mississippians, because I know that they're my white brothers and sisters that are out here from the Gulf Coast all the way to Memphis, Tennessee borders, that you know what? They disagree with that. And I am so proud that what we're doing in Clark Still, we're getting ready to have a march. Young leaders are coming together, young mm -hmm. people out of Ole Miss. They're coming to Clarksdale on Saturday to have a protest. And you know what, Paul? This thing doesn't see a whole bunch of black people anymore. It's a lot of white people and black people joining arm in arm and saying that what happened to George Floyd should never happen ever happen. And I'm proud of that. I'm going to stand with those young adults, and we're going to walk the streets of Clarksdale right. in okay. peace, hand in hand. Does it surprise you at all, Mayor, that uh, a, a vast majority, I'm sure of this audience, but a vast majority of white people in this country stand with you on that one, as long as it's a peaceful protest, white and black, Nobody, and if you don't believe this, then I don't think our relationship has yeah. come far enough to understand that. Because uh, I, I, I sincerely believe there are always going to be skinheads. There are always going to be racists right. on in every ethnicity of every color. We understand that you're never going to get all these people out. But, but more we can't turn a blind that, eye. 
Nobody's we, turning we, a blind we can't eye. Turn a blind who eye. the hell's turning a blind well, eye? What I, what you, those are the skinheads out there. Those are the racists, and you're never going to change these people. The same people who are, are going are to embrace the flag, and, and if that flag, we start talking about that, it's taking their rights away. And we don't, I don't even want to go there. But you ought, the, the, the narrative ought to be, my God, today more than ever, if anybody exhibits any racism like that bluntly, proudly on the Internet, they're going to make the news. They're going to be out there, and they're going to be canned. And if they have that racist part of their body, they need to keep it within themselves. Now, the other part of this is how do you handle the looters, too? Nobody wants to talk about this during uh, Floyd. You got you got you got black owners out there who are destroyed, absolutely destroyed. We played a cut a, a little bit earlier this morning, and I feel for this lady. Who says black lives matter? I work here part time. Plus, I'm a part owner of this store. You said black lives matter. Why don't you choke me? I'm black. Tell Look what you did to my store. These are my Look, right here. We've been here all night cleaning up. All night cleaning. Tell me Black Lives Matter. You lied. You wanted to loot the store. You needed money. Get a job like I do. Stop stealing. This is the neighborhood. We're trying to build it up. And you tearing it down. We trying to build it up, and you're tearing it down. Mm-hmm. And I and and I and I'm telling you, the thought out there from a lot of people, whites and blacks, or she is just the cost of doing business for to right. get the word L- out. Looting, for George looting, Ford. and doing that type of vandalism is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And and guess what, Paul? There are absolutely stats that are out there that showing that white supremacists are coming out there covering their face. And I mean, we saw it on on live on social media yep. yesterday. Yep. Uh, people hiding behind masks and then having other sinister intent. Listen. Giving Paul, bricks to some of the young blacks. Right, no, and I'm saying, no, coming out when everyone's gone and vandalizing buildings, and I've seen this, and so I'm not advocating for any type of violence. No, not in our state and not in anywhere across the nation. But this is what I am saying. We have an opportunity in our state. We can seize the moment with the Legislative Black Caucus. We can seize the moment with a governor that is doing a great job right now. And you know what you do, Paul? This is our moment in our state. We can do measurable minor items that will give significant gains. So like so, number, one, what? So, number one, give me an idea. take down the flag. Well, bring, uh, bring number a, one. Yeah. Number one, take yeah. it down now and yeah. guess what? Bring a flag that will unite us. And then guess what? Number two, you start working with the police association in the state of Mississippi and have measurable changes that will protect African Americans when they're in handcuffs or in the hands of police officers. Then you do like what we're doing in the city of Clarksdale. Implement community policing so officers will have a joint venture with the citizens. And there's no discomfort. Paul, I'm trying to tell you, I believe in Governor Tate Reeves. I believe in Philip Gunn. I know that, Deborah Hoseman, we can all do this and we can do it in a way that brings Mississippi together. I know we can. Always good seeing you. Thank you, sir. What time is the march coming up over this weekend? Saturday. It starts at Saturday at 5 o'clock. I'm encouraging everyone to come out for a peaceful march, and let's bring people together. And I'm just so proud. But, Paul, guess what? George Floyd did not die for anything that hurts us. He has healed globally all across the world, and I'm thankful for what he's done for us. I'm thankful for George Floyd. The Thank God for him. mayor of Clarksville, Chuck Aspie. It's always good seeing you, sir. Jason White, Speaker Pro Tem, is coming up after news on the top of the hour.